in this lecture we will learn about multi stage graph and we will learn how to find the shortest path from a source to sink in a multi stage graph and we will use dynamic programming to solve this problem so what is a multi stage graph so multi stage graph has nodes which form distinct groups okay or stages so here if you see so this is the source this is the sink node and we have to find the shortest path from this source to this destination and we see that we have stages here so this is stage v1 v2 v3 v4 and v5 where the source will be in the first stage and the sink will be in the last stage and in the first and the last stage there is only one node and now at each of the stages if you see so if these are the stages so if an edge is uv then u must belong to stage vi then v should belong to stage vi plus 1 so the edges the nodes at the end points of edge should belong to consecutive stage okay so now our problem is to see how this can be solved by dynamic programming and besides why we should not use just a simple greedy algorithm also because greedy algorithm also we are tempted to use but we will see that might not give us the exact solution okay and then why we can make it solve it using a dynamic programming method okay so these are some of the questions that we will look at first is why greedy algorithm why a simple greedy algorithm fails for solving multi stage graph problem why dynamic programming okay why dynamic programming what gives us intuition that we should use dynamic programming okay so these are the things that we will look at and then by brute force how we can do okay so these are the three questions we will look at so by brute force what will happen by greedy algorithm what will happen so we have one concrete example so here is the graph okay and in this graph this is the source this is the first stage v1 this is the second stage v2 where you have nodes 2 3 4 5 then we have the third stage v3 node 6 7 8 belong to that then the fourth stage v4 with node 9 10 and 11 and last stage v5 which has only one node the sink node 12 okay so now we should look at a few things okay so first one is let's see with greedy choice okay so with greedy choice what happens greedy choice so we have some options at from stage vi to stage vi plus 1 we have to choose one edge from where we should go so here if we take a greedy choice it's very simple choose the smallest edge that is 2 so i choose 2 which is 1 2 5 is the edge its value is 2 then here we have two options from node 5 to the next stage v3 we have 11 and 8 we should choose 5,8 edge whose weight is 8 then at 8 we have 5 and 6 are the options so i will choose 8 and 10 which has cost 5 and from then 10 we have a cost of 2 okay so 10 to 12 it is 2 so what happens now we have a greedy choice here and our sum is 
2 plus 8 so 10 plus 5 15 and 17 okay but if you see so I'm giving you the solution of dynamic programming or in fact the optimal solution if you see so let's try to check that one so if I choose the 9 which is the highest one the opposite of the greedy choice okay so 9 and then if I choose 2 to 7 so it is 9 plus 2 11 this one this one if I choose and then if I choose a 3 so 11 plus 3 14 and plus 2 it is 16 so you see that with one of the most opposite to the greedy choice we made and still we are having a path length of 16 which is better than the greedy choice algorithm okay so this tells us that and in fact i can make even a worse example or even much better example for dynamic programming let's say i go here and make it instead of 8 i make it 80 so again it will give you the longest path okay so greedy choice fails we should not use for finding the optimal solution this goes away let us delete it also from this picture okay so greedy choice has failed and now what should we look at we should look at something better that will give us the solution the correct solution and what is that method so now we will apply what is known as brute force the so brute force what it does i will enumerate all the possible paths find whichever has the minimum cost so what will happen here is that you will get a tree isn't it so if i make i will just show it give you a hint what will be done from one i have four possibilities isn't it so this is the possibility two then i have possibility three four five these nodes i can go from two i have how many possibilities i have three possibilities isn't it i have to go to i can go to six seven and eight six seven and eight from six i have again two possibilities nine and ten from nine i have one possibility of twelve from ten only one possibility twelve from seven if I go to 7 from node 2 to node 7 I have 9 and 10 as the possibility again and then to source so that will be to the destination 8 from 8 I have 10 and 11 so this is the tree you are branching out from 3 I have 6 and 7 isn't it so I have 6 and 7 I can go from 6 again 9 and 10 so I will make my pencil even much sharper so it will be 9 and 10 from 7 also I can go to 9 and 10 then what happens from 9 and 10 you will go to 12 so from 4 if we see so from 4 we have so 4 you can go to just 8 okay and from 8 you can go to 10 or 11 10 or 11 and then what will happen from 5 what can happen from node 5 where is node 5 I can go to 7 and 8 I have some more space so I can make something bigger I can not node 5 I can go to 7 and 8 from 7 I can go to again 9 and 10 from 8 I can go to 10 and 11 so basically if you see now so how many paths are there from 1 to 12 so all these finally it will be all 12 so they will not add to the path so if I even count these nodes so they will give us so 12 12 12 everywhere you do okay so this way if we count so let us count the number of paths this is one 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन पाथ्स आर देर ओके सो दिस इज द ट्री कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू द पॉसिबल पाथ सो दिस इज नॉट वेरी अ स्मॉल पिक्चर आई हैव टेकन बिकॉज इट वॉज कमिंग इन द सेम स्क्रीन सो दैट यू इट विल बी इजियर फॉर यू सो आई ड्रॉ ड्रिव इट हियर एंड वी सी दैट वी हैव दीज मेनी एज मेनी लीव्स आर देयर सो मेनी पाथ्स आर देयर सो सिक्सटीन आई थिंक वी हैव now you just enumerate so find the length of the edges so for 1 to 2 it's 9 2 to 6 it is 4 4 to 9 so 4 to 9 where is it 4 to 9 so basically 6 to 9 sorry so 6 to 9 you have 6 and then 9 to 12 you have 4 so add this up 9 4 13 6 19 23 so is the path length you can enumerate the find the cost of the path for all and minimum among them will be your shortest path so this is basically what so what will be the complexity of this algorithm so we are just branching at each step so how many edges this has so it will be basically getting multiplied so each of the nodes you have so n nodes are there and for all of them we are finding the degrees of them okay so it will become basically if you try to find the complexity of this algorithm it will become the node into its the node 1 into 4 so 1 into 4 plus then again you have to do for this you will find the degrees okay so it will be quite its complexity will be high okay it will be exponential and hence you see that this brute force algorithm works but it is taking us a lot of time complexity so now what to do okay so let's try to see a few things this tree that we expanded now why we can apply dynamic programming on this we can apply dynamic programming because you see that lot of trees sub trees are common that is overlapping sub structure overlapping sub problems are there okay and principle of sub optimality also holds that okay if from here to here i found the shortest path then if i add the shortest path from there it will become the shortest path for whole path basically it tells that if there is a node in between in the shortest path so this whole thing is the shortest path then this path p1 and p2 both will be the shortest path if this node lies in between so this tells that overlapping substructure is also there and principle of optimality also holds because you see this tree from 6 whatever is there it is getting repeated here also from seven whatever sub tree is there it is getting repeated here it is getting repeated here okay so we have overlapping sub problems so what we do bingo so this brings us to the thought that we can use dynamic programming to solve this problem okay so now we will use dynamic programming to solve this particular problem okay so let's now see how to solve using dynamic programming so let's see so what happens here is now we will try to formulate the recurrence relation so we see that let's cost cij with the cost of h i comma j okay so this tells us the weight of the h i j and then c o s t cost i comma j it means the cost of the shortest path from node j in the stage i to the sink t okay so this tells cost i comma j for example in this graph it will say that okay cost 3 comma 6 means cost of the shortest path from node 6 in stage 
to the destination okay so that is the meaning of this cost i comma j so now we can formulate a very good dynamic programming problem recurrence relation cost i comma j which means let's see the cost from node 3 which is in stage 2 to the final destination t so i have how many possibilities from here i can go to the next stage or let's say from 2 i can go to the next stage in three ways okay and let's assume that okay i know what is the shortest path from node 6 7 and 8 which is the in the next stage then i can simply say that okay add this path plus the shortest path from node 6 to t find cost of 2 to 7 that h plus the minimum cost from 7 to t find cost from 2 to 8 this h plus the cost of 8 to t the minimum among them will be the shortest path so this is written here cost ij the cost of shortest path from node j to node t where j belongs to stage i is equal to cost the weight of c j comma l the edge from j to l where j is our node in stage i and l is node in stage i plus 1 so the cost of j to sink t we already know it is cost i plus 1 comma l because this is the cost it is in stage i plus 1 and its node l and then what happens for which of these cjl i calculate so where j comma l belongs to an edge and l is a node in the next stage vi plus 1 so this will help us solve the problem okay so for this graph now let's try to see how we solve the problem 